At this time, I will now turn this webinar over to Kinga for us to begin. Hello, <clears throat> I hope can, uh, that everybody can uh, uh, see my screen and can hear me okay. Uh, so uh, I am Kinga Kosmala. I work for the Women's Business uh, Development Center in the Entrepreneurial Division. And I would like to uh, thank um, Business Affairs and Consumer Protection for uh, inviting me here today. So this is uh, our uh, presentation uh, and the topic is how to start a business in Illinois. And I hope that it can be helpful um, to everybody who is attending this webinar. So, sorry, here is a, a bit of um, information about me. If anybody is interested in contacting me directly, this is my email. And it, it will it will be in the recording, and also it can be. Uh, I'm sure that um, you know it, it can. It, I'm easy to find. You can uh, just go to our website wbdc.org. So, um, what's the um, what are the um, goals today? So, what I would like to do is I would like to present. Um, um, you know, uh, uh, tell you uh, a little bit about our services, WBDC, meaning Women's Business Development Center. Um, and then I would like us to concentrate on, um, you know, many aspects of starting a business. As um, I'm sure that every business owner would tell you, uh, running a business is not just, uh, you know, worrying about money and about, you know, um, the product that uh, the business is selling, but also about many, many other aspects. So first I would like to do a mindset, uh, sorry, a mindset self-assessment, um, then uh, kind of discuss the steps uh, that every business owner should take uh, when they are thinking about starting a business. And then uh, how we uh, in particular can be helpful to anybody who is thinking about starting a business. What services uh, does the WBDC have? So we actually have, um, we, we uh, can offer a, a wide array of services, but what we do offer in particular, what we're very good at is connections, capital and contracts. So three C's. Uh, and then what do I mean by connections? Of course, this is, um, you know, uh, a very short uh, word for, um, for an important aspect of running a business, meaning networking and uh, knowing people in your field, knowing other people who, um, you know, are dealing with similar uh, problems and not just problems, but also maybe achievements and accomplishments. So we, uh, we do that. We connect people, we, uh, we help with uh, business owners getting to know each other and uh, attending all kinds of events uh, and um, creating um, important connections through such events. Uh, so these are the services that we can uh, provide. Uh, we have, uh, oh, it's important to notice that most of our services are actually free. We do not charge our clients for most of our services. And if we do charge, that's a nominal fee for uh, only some of the cohorts that we teach. Uh, cohorts meaning um, courses. Um, so we have a one-on-one -on -one business advice and management assistance. We help people with uh, developing uh, their business plans. We also help with accessing uh, the market information, meaning you know we help them do market research, which as we will see very soon is one of the most important elements of starting a business. We also have uh, a specialized team that helps people um, with assistance um, uh, when it comes to getting uh, corporate and government contracts. And uh, by government, I mean all levels of government, meaning city, county, state, and federal. Um, we also have a specialized team, a separate one, uh, which helps people with the financial analysis, financial planning, and also with uh, financial opportunities such as loans and grants. Um, we teach, uh, like I said, we teach cohorts, which are just another word for courses where we teach people how to run businesses, how to become more profitable, how to expand, how to prepare for succession, and also how to prepare for government contracts. We also have people who uh, help with um, 
the ever-changing world of technology and all of the digital tools that nowadays every business owner um, uses in their everyday life. So we also have uh, people who do that, who teach and uh, run cohorts on that. So these are our services in a, in a very, uh, presented in a very short way. What, what do I mean by capital? Uh, as I've mentioned uh, a minute ago, we have a specialized team called Access to Capital who helps business owners with um, all kinds of financial questions, uh, financial analysis of their businesses, um, getting, like I said, grants, although, you know, uh, when starting a business, one should not rely on grants, but that's only, you know, a helpful tool sometimes with loans, of course, and with crowdfunding. What about contracts? Contracts is also another area of our services. As I've mentioned before, we help people, we help businesses which are more established. Uh, of course, you know, to, to get a government contract, a business cannot be a startup, you know, in their very first month of existence. This is for more established services with a certain level of income. And uh, those businesses are very much eligible for contracts with all levels of government, like I mentioned before, meaning city, county, state, and federal. We help with those. We have people who uh, specialize in those and they are uh, very good at their job. So if uh, anybody's interested, I highly recommend their um, services. Um, now, uh, kind of a question, um, you know, how do you people feel? <laughs> Uh, that's a that's a funny question to ask, uh, you know, at a business webinar, but that's actually really important. So might you be maybe scared a little bit or unsure uh, on what's happening, maybe happy, maybe angry, or maybe even, you know, kind of, uh, you know, sure of uh, oneself and, and, and ready to go. So why do I ask this? Because the next question um, that I have for everybody attending this seminar is, do you have what it takes? And what do I mean by that? Um, so a business owner should be someone who uh, is very much aware of their situation. And I don't mean just the financial situation because obviously that has to be, you know, that's one of the uh, fundamentals, uh, fundamental things uh, when it comes to starting a business, but also, you know, how, is this new thing, this new business going to affect that person's life? Because that is a really big question that everybody should answer. Everybody who is thinking about starting a business, they should answer. Um, so, um, uh, and so the next thing that you know people should think about is um, why, uh, what kind of Oh, or maybe I shouldn't put it in in a negative way. Um, how many? Uh, what's the percentage of business ideas which become successful? Unfortunately, uh, you know, studies show, and they show it very clearly, that more than ninety percent of ideas, especially with startups, especially with new businesses, um, what happens is that these businesses are actually are not successful, uh, that they fail, right? So only a small percentage, as you see from this diagram, only 6%, um, that varies, of course, you know, it can be, you know, it's always always a question what it means to become successful, but, uh, but less than 10% of ideas that people have that, you know, um, are original, um, that people actually come up with, um, that they think are original, that people come up with, um, become successful. And um, there is, of course, you know, a reason for that. Um, so now I would like everybody to uh, just uh, take a couple of minutes, literally two to three minutes, to answer the following questions. And now we'll show them on, on screen in a second. Uh, and just take a little bit of time and think, you know, uh, which of these questions, to which of these questions your answer would be yes, and to which would be no. And, and be kind of honest to yourself, because this is a self-assessment, you know, we're not going to reveal the results. This is just for you. This is just for people who are thinking about starting a business. And it 
it's important to think you know where you are in general with many aspects of your life okay so i'm going to uh go to the next slide and then i was thinking that maybe we can take two to three minutes just answering these questions and really these these questions are just to yourself so here are 15 questions and this is a self-assessment which i've mentioned before so if maybe we could take um literally three minutes maybe i think we're good on time so i'm going to start a um a timer and uh, mute myself. I will mute myself for three minutes for now. So three minutes is up. And now I would like to um, explain maybe a couple of these questions. Um, so you guys can see that uh, there's a question, have I failed before? Have I been fired? So this is not about you know reminding people about their failures or things which did not go the way they wanted to go in, in their lives. But this is about more about how a person deals with uh, setbacks, how they can handle something that is not going, you know, according to the uh, predictions or according to their wishes, you know, can they um, sustain a, a difficult period in their lives. This is all to kind of prepare people for situations which, you know, cannot be predicted. Uh, I'm sure you guys know uh, many business owners who uh, talk about, you know, situations which they have never encountered before, and then yet they have to deal with them, right? They have to be ready for anything that life 
and that business throws at them, right? So, sorry. Uh, um, so maybe uh, to just kind of explain why we have these 15 questions is, and why we ask, you know, have you uh, answered yes to um, any of them? is uh, because we kind of uh, give this assessment to uh, our clients, to future and current business owners. And we usually say that if you have yeses, right? 12 to 15 yeses, then you are very much ready to run a business, right? If you have between, let's say, you know, these are not very, um, you know, precise measurements, right? This is more about kind of, um, uh, thinking about the situation in which you are starting a business and how uh, you are going to respond to it. If you have between, I would say, seven to 11 yeses, then um, you are uh, on your way there, but you have to maybe think a little bit more. You need people to um, uh, talk to, you have to prepare a little bit better. And this is where we come in, right? This is where we can actually help. Uh, but I would say if you have, you know, less than six yeses or less than five yeses, like I said, these are not very precise measurements, I would say don't do it yet. Uh, prepare more, think more, research more, talk to specialists, talk to maybe uh, a bigger audience about your idea and um, try to make your idea more precise, more uh better delineated, if I could say that. And of course, we always uh, are here to help. And remember that this is why WBDC exists. And this is why we are here to, to help uh, clients actually even come up with a better idea and then prepare for uh, a new uh, business. So what are five traits of successful entrepreneurs? Because, you know, as, as we see with our clients and as studies show, successful uh, entrepreneurs are um, kind of, uh, they have several uh, personality traits. And what would we say? They believe in themselves, right? So it's not to say that they have to be arrogant, absolutely not, but they believe in, them, in themselves in the sense that they know what they want and they know how to get there. They develop a clear vision, right? So it's not vague, it's not kind of muddy, but they know exactly what they want to do, right? They persist through life's storms. That's why, you know, in the previous slide, you guys saw that question or questions, have you failed before? Have you been fired? Because that's actually a good thing, you know, believe it or not, it's a good thing because it prepares you for life's you know, difficult situations. And they are self-aware, which means they know their own weaknesses, they know their own strong, um, you know, points or uh, strong suits. Uh, they are not someone who live, you know, kind of um, in, in, as we call it, in the la-la land, right? But they know exactly what they are good at and what they're not good at. And then the last thing is, they are financially stable, right? That's not to say that they're already rich, right? Because that's not the point. The point is that they actually have a stable financial foundation on which they can build their new business. So <clears throat> the questions that a future business owner should ask themselves, you know, except for, of course, you know, the, the, <laughs> the ones that I have uh, shown you uh, a minute ago, is not just, you know, am I financially ready? Do I know what my vision is? And do I want to do it? But also, who else is affected by my decision? Because we don't exist in a vacuum. We all have people who are around us. It's a family, friends, uh, people, uh, other people who are in our lives. And our decision um, to open a business, to start something new, something very demanding, right? Um, will change the relationships that we have in our lives because it will be the most important thing in our life uh, from the moment we actually started, right? Uh, it will be something that a business owner, as you know, pretty much every business owner will tell you, it's something that you will be thinking about when you will be going to bed, waking up, 
you know, during the day, having morning coffee, driving through traffic, it will be the most important thing always on your mind and always present in, in life, right? So obviously it will affect other relationships that you have in your life. And what's really important is to have their support. Because, you know, if people around you are against it, it will be very difficult to uh, launch that business and to, to have it successful. It's not to say that it hasn't been done before. Of course, it has, you know, some of the businesses that we now know are successful were not launched with the support of family and businesses, uh, sorry, family and friends, but uh, that is, that just adds a, another level of stress, which, you know, a person starting a business should not be dealing with. Next question, and it's a really difficult question, is what are my financial backup plans? Do I have money uh, to support myself in the first um, months of uh, having my business? We usually uh, advise our clients when they launch a new business to keep a, a source of income which is independent of that business. What do I mean by that? So if you have a day job, right? Hopefully not very demanding. Um, don't quit that job until you know that the business you're starting is successful and it's able to sustain you. Because in the first often six months, sometimes even a year, a new business is not uh, something that will be able to sustain you. So we uh, that's why we say don't quit that day job. Not yet. Right. And I know that this sounds sometimes, you know, like a very difficult thing, you know, having a job and starting a business. But like I said before, this is what we are here for. And this is uh, what we're, you know, this is what our mission is to support uh, business owners uh, and uh, in their journey and on all of the stages of their journey. And also, uh, Another question, uh, number three, uh, and this slide is the time commitment for a new business will be a really large one, right? So a person starting a business cannot expect that they will deal, you know, two hours you know, per week and they will be fine. You know, we're all hearing these stories of, you know, kids on the internet, you know, in this social media or another social media platform, you know, promoting something and making millions. Uh, maybe, you know, who knows, uh, I'm not a very big fan of such stories because they put, you know, false um, uh, perspective on actual real business uh, owners. So what we should really think about is that the time commitment for starting a new business is a large one. And does it really fit with my life goals? If I'm thinking about, you know, maybe, I don't know, getting another degree or, learning something new, like, I don't know, painting or who knows, sewing, right? And I'm starting a business, you know, uh, doing something very different, that probably is not exactly aligned with my life goals. So that's another really important question to ask oneself. And what do we see at the WBDC as five steps for starting a business? So uh, number one is solve a problem. And um, what is this solve a problem uh, thing? So this is not about, um, um, you know, solving a problem in uh, one's life and that the new business should be, you know, something that will solve whatever problem you're facing right now. But what we tell our clients uh, is that a new business, uh, if it's supposed to be successful, it should be solving a problem in society. Uh, there is, a problem and by problem I mean you know that there is you know as many people call it a niche right you need to know what it is that you're doing that no one else is doing and that you're going to be very good at and it's going to be very unique and no one else will be able to do it as well as you do so that's that this is what we mean by solving a problem number two do research Okay, always, always do research. We very often see clients who have this wonderful idea and many ideas are absolutely wonderful, but they have not done their research. And they're not sure if that idea is actually something that is um, sustainable, right? That's something that is um, uh, something that, you know, people will like and will actually pay for it, right? So always, always do research. And again, 
we are here to help if you kind of feel lost and don't know how to do it. Number three, test. Always test your idea. Uh, don't just assume that you know people will like it because you like it, right? There is a product or there is a service that you think is great, it's wonderful, and of course, you know everybody's going to like it. That's not always the case, and I will try to illustrate it um, uh, in, in 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 a minute or two. Uh, but for now, just always remember that you know you have to test your idea. Then plan, of course, you know, we help with that. We help with the business plan. We help with all kinds of planning and then build your business. But then most importantly, go from research to testing very often, but also go back to research, right? Don't do it just one and assume, you know, that this is, you have tested your idea. You have done your market research. You know that people will like it. Well, situations happen, you know, things happen, you know, the world is constantly changing. We live in a very, very fast paced world. So what's true, you know, uh, in January might not be true in June. So that's why we recommend testing and researching as much as possible. So these are the uh, kind of the, the, the things that I have just talked about, right? So problems, solving a problem. What is the problem that you're solving in society? What is the issue that you're dealing with that your business is the one that will actually solve that issue, right? Right, and then when you are solving that problem and you are presenting it to other people, be clear and concise. Like I said before, you know, we live in a very fast paced world. People don't have time and no one wants to listen to you explaining, you know, what idea you have for five minutes. Not at all, right? So you have to be very concise. You have to be very clear and also be as specific as possible. And there is a reason why I'm showing you this, uh, you know, picture of, you know, a situation that we probably will be facing in, in you know, two or three months. Uh, as much as we don't want it. And today's weather is actually kind of nice, uh, but you know, winter is coming. So we will face this situation. There's a reason why, you know, this picture is here. Um, so, uh, so we see here, you know, a street, busy street in a big city and we have a bus, we have a taxi, right? So, and then we have, you know, some cars hidden behind that taxi. So, um, Let's say we there is a business which says that we are helping people go anywhere and get anything, right? Um, so the solution to that is, you know, getting an Uber, right? We now know Uber very well. We, um, you know, most of us use it if it's Uber or Lyft in Chicago, because uh, we, you know, we have two in Chicago. That's our solution, right? They can get us anywhere. We can get anything. Um, they help us with that. And this is uh, this is a solution to a problem that existed in society not long ago, right? What was the problem that existed um, that Uber solved, right? So um, the situation was, hey, you, I don't know if you guys remember, when Uber was actually kind of becoming popular, the situation was that uh, it was very, it was becoming very clear that people need to be, need some kind of a means of transportation um, different than public transportation, which was often, you know, not functioning well, or it doesn't actually go uh, everywhere, right? Like buses and trains. Uh, and, um, you know, it's not always, you know, it's sometimes it's very you know, like crowded and, and people don't like it. And uh, the on the other side of the spectrum was, uh, you know, were cars, you know, you know private uh, cars, which, you know, they uh, only work for the owner or, I don't know, the, the owner's family. So the solution was, uh, you know, many people were actually thinking about the solution. One of the solutions was, I don't know if you guys remember when Segway was being introduced. And I remember that, 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 that advertising campaign, which uh, kind of, stated that Segway, uh, those uh, little, I don't know what to call them, vehicles, you know, scooters, uh, Segways, that they were, they were, uh, 
they were supposed to revolutionize the way we would move around the city, right? That everybody would own one and we would not need vehicles anymore. We would not need public transportation, but we would actually be all using these little segways. I don't know if you guys actually come here uh, downtown, meaning uh, this is where our offices are. So yes, we see segways now uh, sometimes, you know, um, they are just an attraction uh, for tourists, like tourist attraction. Uh, they are this, this funny little thing and people go around, you know, here, Millennium Park and Grand Park and, and see all of the pretty things here, but they are not what actually really revolutionized, uh, you know, the way we move around the city. It's actually Uber or uh, Lyft, right? Whichever company. Um, the concept of getting a car anywhere you want. So that idea, even though, you know, it looked like it was going to be actually a, a good one and, and a, you know, it had really catchy and, and kind of big visible advertising campaign, it did not succeed, right? It did not uh, take into consideration many aspects of living in the city, such as uh, Chicago, right? Uh, well, now we see, you know, many, you know, electric bikes and just still regular bi bikes and, and of course, you know, little, uh, you know, electric scooters. And, and that's great. That's wonderful. Um, you know, it's really good to, to have all kinds of options. But, you know, as I have shown you in this picture, you know, a minute ago, we're about to uh, go into the winter season and none of them will work. Right, we're going to actually need a vehicle which will shield us from from the weather. Right, so these uh, segways looked like a good idea, but actually did not succeed. And that's an important lesson to remember when starting a business. So here we have just a couple of um, explanations or like really short, uh, you know, uh, slogans of. Um, uh, famous companies, which, uh, you know, what kind of problem, I mean, it's really not a problem, but what kind of niche, what kind of issue they are actually addressing or dealing with. So Facebook, of course, helps you connect with people in your life. And nowadays, it's, of course, not just Facebook, but, you know, all of the other Instagram and, and TikTok and, and platform formerly known as Twitter and so on, right? DHL, DHL, you know, a famous um, uh, shipping company, uh, their slogan is, we move the world. Virgin Airlines make flying good again. So these are, of course, you know, uh, big slogans and, and you know, whole teams thought about uh, those slogans for, for a long time, right? Be because these are big companies, but they are, uh, you know, very concise and, and short ways of introducing of what this company does, right? Uh, so this is a, also a kind of a way of thinking about the business. What kind of problem will your business be solving? What kind of issue will it be addressing, right? Okay. So uh, the next thing that a business owner should think about, and it's a really, really important one, is market research. Many uh, future business owners which come to us here, uh, uh, you know, asking for help and guidance and advice, they, many of them worry about competition. Competition actually is very low on the list of, of things that uh, a new business owner should think about. A, a new player which enters the game should be thinking about many, many other aspects of running that business. Competition is really, like I said, low on the list. When uh, that business becomes successful, when it grows, when it becomes an important player, uh, you know, in the market, when it, it, it becomes famous and people talk about it, then it's time to think about competition. At the beginning, it's the market research. And here we have questions, who, what, where, when, and why, which are the questions that, you know, a new business should be thinking about. So here we have, uh, how are we doing on time? Um, maybe I'll just kind of glide over uh, the next part because I don't want to take too much time on you know, going into the specifics of market research uh, because I want to leave a little bit of time for the Q&A session. 
Uh, and by the way, if there are any sessions which you know people would prefer to ask in Polish, then you know uh, you are very much welcome to uh, ask them in Polish. You can put them in the chat, and I will read them and, and I can answer them. So market research actually. Um, if people are interested in the in the specifics of market research in the theoretical side, we're very much you know can talk about it, uh, and we invite everybody to to come here to the WBDC, get an appointment with with the advisors, and we can talk about the the specifics. But yeah, anyway, so primary sources, secondary sources, and research topics. Primary sources, obviously, that's um, you know when you do market research you're on your own when you do focus groups, when you do surveys, interviews, product testing, of course, you can pay um, people uh, who specialize in, in market research uh, to, do, to do that. Primary sources, the, uh, this type of market research is good because it is very much um, targeted toward your business, right? But it can be expensive if you hire someone to do it. Secondary sources, meaning you, for example, can go to uh, government information services such as census, for example, right? Uh, internet, obviously, um, libraries and so on. Uh, this is good because it's, of course, you know, it's not as expensive because you don't have to pay. But at the same time, it's not, uh, it's not custom made for you, right? It's just a very general uh, kind of... Um, way of finding information. And then, you know, research topics, very precise, concrete research topics, which can be researched, right? Okay, um, let's go further. And uh, this is a, an important question. Why do businesses fail? Because like I've shown you, uh, like I've shown you uh, um, not long ago, unfortunately, many of them do, right? So why do they fail? because there is no market need. This is the most and the biggest, the largest uh, reason why businesses fail. As you guys can see, this is actually 42% uh, of, of, you know, this is the reason 40% why business would fail, right? Of course, you know, you have other um, situations like, you know, businesses ran out of cash, you know, there were not uh, the right people on the team. Uh, they got out competed, but that's not that's not really the most uh, important reason. The most and the biggest reason, which we see actually all the time here at the WBDC, that no real market research was done, uh, and there was a, as a result that business owner who was starting that business didn't actually see that there was no real market need for that product or service that they actually had in mind. So the next thing is to test, right? Have you tested your idea? We always ask our clients, have you validated your idea? Have you talked to people? Have you done your market research? Um, how much do you know about your market research uh, demand? Um, do you know if what you are offering actually will be liked by people and not just liked, will people be willing to pay for it, right? Because they might like it, but they are not willing to pay for it. So always, always test your idea, validate that idea. You can do uh, customer interviews, you can do surveys, you can do actual sales of a prototype, right, of a product that you have in mind. And again, we help with that uh, if that's something that you need help with. So these are the experiments that you can try to test the market, right, a customer interview, customized service, and social media campaigns. And again, I don't want to spend too much time on it because that's more of a um, kind of like an in-depth topic, which we can get into if any one of you would like to get into that, we again uh, invite everybody here to, to get their appointments and talk to us about it. Write a business plan, right? We help with that too. Uh, a business plan is supposed to be a, a living, breathing document that changes with the business, that changes with the business owner, something that is always there, that is a roadmap for the business, that, that helps the business owner always think about all of the elements, all of the aspects that they should be thinking about. Uh, and build your business 
properly, right? Build it on a solid foundation, right? So know your costs. Uh, we, ha we have a very, very nice, uh, very nicely created spreadsheet, uh, uh, just a plain Microsoft Excel document, which we, you know, gladly share with our clients, which help them see all of the expenses that they should be thinking about, you know, down to like literally electricity or like office supplies, that kind of stuff. And it helps them plan for the following 12 months. So always, always know your monthly costs. Then you know, choose the company location if it's a brick and mortar, of course, business, or if it's an online business, then of course, you know, it's a, it's online, right? Choose a company name. Uh, obviously, first you have to check if that name is not taken, right? Uh, because there might be already a business with the same name, right? Then you have to think of something else. Reserve domain name. We, we've very strongly, uh, recommend getting a domain the moment you register your business with the Secretary of State because uh, you know domains can be bought by other people and then you know it's very hard to actually uh, bought a domain from another person because that other person can charge you as much as they want because there is no law that says otherwise. Uh, choose your legal structure uh, meaning do you want an LLC? Do you want a C Corp? Do you want an S Corp? Do you want um, some other legal entity? We help with that too. If people want, we send them, um, you know, a description of all the legal entities available in this state, and um, we also, you know, can talk to you uh, if you are not sure what to choose. Then, of course, you have to uh, get your federal uh, tax ID, the EIN number, employer identification number, the one that you will be paying taxes with. Uh, obtain your Illinois business tax ID. Uh, then all of the uh, registration and licensing requirements that will depend on the type of business that is being run by you. And then open a bank account, right? And then insure your company. Uh, and now I think we still have, oh, oh, good. Okay, we have more than 10 minutes of uh, the, the, the Q&A session. And uh, if people are uh, interested in finding out more about our services, then I will try to answer any questions people might have. So I will stop sharing, okay? Um, and, uh, so uh, what should we do? Should we read this? Uh, uh, Stella, are you here? Yes. Okay. So uh, how should we do it? Uh, You do have a few questions. Yeah, okay. Uh, so uh, I can see there are many questions. Um, so I, I can see one that I can answer immediately. Would you please email a copy of the slideshow? I actually cannot do that because that's uh, uh, that belongs to the WBDC. So I don't know how it works with the recording, um, if the recording can be shared. The recording will be shared on YouTube. Okay, so it will be shared on YouTube. So so uh, the, the actual slides will be there. I cannot share the actual slideshow because these are our rules. But if you have any questions uh, about, um, about uh, you know, what I said here, then I will gladly answer them. Uh, you can always call us, you can always make an appointment with us. And no, this, none of this is like secret information. I just cannot share the slides, okay? Uh, is WBDC a nonprofit organization? Very much so, yes. Yeah, we are a nonprofit 501c3 organization. Um, can we unmute for questions? Uh, uh, I think it's uh, someone named Darnis, yes? Uh, I don't know, Stella, what's the, uh, what's the rule on that? Someone is asking if it can be, if they can be unmuted to ask a question.
Hold on, hold on. Okay. Okay, so the next question is, can um, I think you uh, share phone numbers again? Um, not sure which phone numbers. Uh, do you mean ours, as in uh, WBDC? Not, not sure if you could, yes. Okay, yes, of course. You know, our phone number is, I always, you know, uh, forget the, the middle uh, two numbers. So it is a one second. Let me get it. So I said three one two, but I will type it for you uh, in the chat. I always forget the the middle three numbers. So it's one second. Okay. Hold on. Wait a minute. I think everything is just sending. Did you just put something in the chat box? No. So when it comes to financing with banks and do we work with any lenders, if you are part of the BACP Entrepreneur Certificate Program, we work with CIBC Bank. Once you've completed nine webinars, we send you a certificate and we put you in contact with our contact over there at CIBC Bank to qual qualify for a low interest rate loan. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, okay. So I'll just read the number. So it's 312-853- 3477, right? This is our number, the WBDC, 312-853-3477, okay? Okay. And then, uh, what else can I see? Um, FEMA loads. Oh, that, that would be something, uh, that would be a, a government contracting. So uh, if you want to, thank you so much. Thank you for putting that number in that in the chat. If you would like to call our front desk and, and ask for, uh, for an appointment with the government contracting people, uh, and, you know, they will help you do it. Where do we enroll for the nine classes? No, not sure which nine classes. Maybe that's a question to BACP. You go to chicago.gov mm -hmm. forward slash uh, BACP certificate. I'll put it in the chat box. Mm -hmm. um, the person that's talking about not being able to receive your certificate, please send an email to BACP outreach at city of Chicago dot org. That's BACP outreach at city of Chicago dot org. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, so there is someone, uh, uh, a Latino male, who is asking that WBDC is focused on providing services for women. So no, we're not just for women. We help uh, everybody. We, our main, uh, you know, target uh, population is women and minority populations. So you very much qualify as a Latino male. So please make an appointment and we will see, you know, what, what kind of uh, help we can actually provide you. Um, so, uh, one second, I'm trying to find a question that I haven't answered yet. Um, so uh, someone is asking if we help with advice. Yes, so we, we try to give, you know, advice that is as, as, as good as possible and guidance and support uh, in all aspects of running a business, beginning with actually the, as we call it, the ideation stage, which is when people are just thinking about something new, all the way through, uh, you know, the, the succession plan, meaning, you know, when, when your business is already big and, 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 and successful, and you are thinking about actually maybe something else in your life. And so then you, you're thinking about either selling the business or maybe giving it to your kids or something like that. So that's succession. So that's, that's entire, that the entire journey, right? From the very, very beginning, all the way to, to uh, succession, right? And then I think someone asked if, we help with uh, establishing 501c3s. So that's not exactly our area of specialty because we are here to help for-profit businesses, not non-profit. But if someone needs help establishing it, you know, one of our advisors can help. You know, you just have to mention it when you call to get our uh, when you call when you call to get uh, an appointment. Um, so let me scroll down. Um, 
So you, again, can you help males? Yes, very much so. We do help males. Uh, like I said, we're not exclusive, we're inclusive. We try to help everybody. Um, one more, I think there was another question. Uh, what's your office number in the building? We are on the fourth floor. So the address is 8 South Michigan, if it's a question to us, right? It might be a question to the ACP. But if it's a question to us, to the WBDC, we are on the fourth floor. The address is 8 South Michigan. We're on Michigan, right across the street from those, those, those fountains with faces, which kind of like are spitting at each other, you know? So that's that's exactly across the street. Um, uh, so someone is asking if we, if they can get a business coach. So we don't have coaches, we have advisors. So we help people with, like I said, with all aspects of uh, having a business, but we don't, we cannot call ourselves coaches. Do you have Russian Ukrainian speaking employees? Yes, uh, I speak Russian and I have been uh, helping mainly Ukrainian clients, but I also have Russian clients and Polish clients. I, I do speak Polish, as you can easily tell from my accent, I am Polish. So I speak Russian and Polish and understand Ukrainian. So if there are people uh, needing services in those languages, yes, we can help them as well. Uh, do you help with certifications? And I'm guessing that's a question to us, uh, and that's the WBE certification meaning a women owned business when women business enterprise we do help with that uh there is a separate team the certification team and they do an excellent job helping people get those um certifications uh someone is asking if our services are free yes as i've said before our services are completely free only some cohorts have a nominal fee and it's only because, you know, there is a book which, you know, I have to purchase, but that's literally like less than a hundred bucks. Um, so how much does it cost? So again, nothing. We don't charge people. <laughs> um, uh, so someone is asking a very specific uh question about alcohol infused candy business and i think that is a question to the city because that uh that's not a question that i would be able to answer so um i think we're slowly running out of time uh so again uh our address is 8 south michigan fourth floor and then our phone number is it's 312-853-3477 so please uh, contact us if you have any questions. Uh, and uh, like I said, we, we try to help everybody and uh, all kinds of businesses have been uh, here and we have existed for more than 40 years, um, hopefully helping you know, many businesses. Okay, I think that is all that I have. For today. So uh, thank you very much for attending. And um, that is all. Thank you. Thank you. If you are part of the BACP Entrepreneur Certificate Program, please log in to the, the database at chicago.gov forward slash BACP certificate to receive credit for today's webinar to join um, our certificate program. Again, please visit chicago.gov forward slash BACP certificate. Um, yes. Thank you to our presenter today from the WBDC, and I hope everyone has as much information that you was looking for today, and see you next time. Okay. Thanks so much. Thank Bye. you.